Starting off with the first game in the franchise, we have the original Plants vs. Zombies 1, which was released in the year 2009. This game is obviously the most important in the entire franchise, as it was literally the one that made the franchise and also made it extremely popular. And well, since this game was extremely popular, it was released on 15 different platforms for the following years since it was originally released. Which just shows how extremely popular this game was at the time. And well, up to this day, this is by far one of the most popular mobile games that was ever released. And well, the original Plants vs. Zombies game contains 5 different game modes, 50 different levels, 5 different worlds, and 26 different zombies, and 49 different plants. So yeah, for the first game in the franchise, it actually had a lot of different content in it. Which is definitely one of the reasons why it succeeded really fast, as well there was tons of different things for the player to do. And well, another thing that made this game really good was that the levels were actually structured really well. As well, it felt like every single level gave you a fair chance to immediately kill the zombies on your first try, but also didn't make it too easy so that the game didn't get instantly boring. Which is a thing that the modern games struggle with, as well, Plants vs. Zombies 2 and Plants vs. Zombies 3 kind of struggle with that. And while I think Plants vs. Zombies 1 did a much better job structuring the levels and while just making them a lot more fair and not too easy. And while I also really like the addition to some other levels like Walnut Bowling and whack a zombie as well, but kind of switches things up in the middle of the game and while it's pretty interesting. And while there was also a good amount of unlockable game modes that you could unlock throughout playing the game. Which just made the game a lot more fresh and also made it so you could actually have a motive to continue playing the game as well but you could start unlocking different plants and different game modes. But yeah, the original Plants vs. Zombies 1 game is definitely a really good game and well, one of the best in the whole franchise. Moving on, we have the Plants vs. Zombies console edition released in the year 2010 on a few different consoles like the PS3, the Xbox One, and the Xbox 360. And well, with the console edition for these games, not a lot actually changed, but there were actually a few different exclusive game modes which were only on console edition. As well, two game modes that were exclusive to the console edition and the DS edition were the versus mode and the co-op mode. And well, these two versions were actually games where you would actually play with another person, so yeah, I actually made it pretty interesting and I actually really like these game modes. And well, these two game modes actually made the console edition a bit more unique and well, but it was actually pretty cool to see that you can actually play with other people in the game. And well, there were also a few exclusive zombies that were only available on console edition and DS edition. These two zombies being the target zombie and the trash can zombie. And well, the zombie wasn't really that useful as well, but the only thing that I did was basically just be used as a human shield. As well, all the zombie did was either stand in front of gravestones or stand in front of other zombies so the other zombies wouldn't get killed or the gravestones wouldn't get damaged. And well, the other exclusive zombie is the trash can zombie and well, it basically just uses the trash can as a shield. As well, it's actually immune to snow peas freezing it as well, but it won't actually freeze the zombie since the trash can blocks it but winter melons could still actually freeze it as well, but goes over the trash can. But yeah, these are two pretty interesting zombies that were only exclusive to the console edition and the DS edition for whatever reason. But yeah, these are still some pretty cool additions even though they don't really add that much. Moving on, we have the DS edition released in the year 2011. Now, just like the console edition, this one actually has a few extra things added to it that are actually just exclusive to DS. As well, all the things exclusive to the console edition are also exclusive to the DS edition, but the DS edition also got a few extra things. But before we go over those things, let's talk about what the DS version is most well known for, obviously being the graphics. As of the DS edition of Plants vs. Zombies is pretty well known for obviously just looking really bad. As well, everything is just really pixelated and the graphics in this game aren't really that good at all. But besides the horrible graphics in this game, they actually have a few pretty exclusive things that are pretty cool. One of these zombies being the baseball zombie. And well, the zombie is only exclusive to one game mode being Home Run Derby, so yeah, it's just one exclusive zombie that's made for one game mode. And well, for the Home Run Derby game mode itself, it's just kind of a really strange game mode. As well, you need to make home runs in this game mode in order to be able to afford plants to stop the zombies from attacking you. And well, there's only two zombies in this entire game mode, both being exclusive to the game. Being the baseball zombie, which we already looked at, and the baseball catapult zombie. 
which is literally the exact same as the normal catapult zombie except it shoots baseballs instead of basketballs. But yeah, this is a pretty strange game mode and I honestly see why it was exclusive to the DS edition as well, but it was just kind of a really strange game mode that no one really played. But yeah, even though it's a really strange game mode, it's actually a pretty interesting one and it's pretty cool that PopCap even decided to even try to make this game mode in the first place. But yeah, just like the console editions, you could also play versus mode and play against other people. Which is once again just a really interesting concept that I kinda wish was on every single different edition of Plants vs Zombies 1. But yeah, overall it's still a pretty interesting edition of the original Plants vs Zombies. Moving on we have Plants vs Zombies Great Wall Edition released in the year 2012. Now this was a Plants vs Zombies game exclusively released in China and it was the first one to actually be exclusively released in China. And while you can't actually play the original game anymore as well, it was discontinued years ago, but you could still play an archive version of it. And while this game actually has a few exclusive new plants and zombies, one of them being just the jalapeno that spawns in every single lane. So yeah, instead of just being a normal jalapeno that destroys one lane, it literally just spawns in every single one of the lanes. And while there was also another new plant named the Future Star, and while well, this plan was released in the 2.0 update and it was literally just a promotion. See, so yeah, all this plan was was just a promotional plan, well it just replaces Starfruit and it literally does the exact same thing as Starfruit, so yeah, it's really nothing that special. And well, there's also a few new zombies in the game, except, well, most of them are just reskins. Such as the Gargantua, which is literally just a Gargantua in a cloud with different clothing and well, but does literally the exact same thing as the Gargantua and all it does is that it's just reskinned. But yeah, there's no really new unique zombies in the game, they're basically just reskinned zombies with sometimes having one or two different abilities, but most of the time they're literally just the exact same as the normal game. And well, just like the zombies and the plants, which are usually just reskins, they also just have reskin worlds as well. So yeah, basically this entire game is just a reskin version of the original Plants vs. Zombies 1. But it is still pretty interesting as well, but it was the first game released exclusively in China for the Plants vs. Zombies franchise. Moving on, we have Plants vs. Zombies Adventures released in the year 2013. And well, this is actually a pretty unique game for the Plants vs. Zombies franchise as well, but it functioned and looked a lot like more a tower defense game. As well, all the zombies went down one path and you had to protect it with plants by placing them around it, so yeah, it's basically just your average tower defense game. And well, just like Plants vs. Zombies Great Wall Edition, this game was actually discontinued, but once again, there is an archive of it that you could play. But yeah, there was actually a lot of new plants in this game, but there was also a ton of VIP plants, which you actually had to pay real money for. And well, it would be one thing if all these new plants that actually cost real money were new and exclusive ones, but a lot of these ones were just reskins of other plants like Pea Shooter. And as well, characters like Sweet Pea, Bee Shooter, and Ice Queen Pea all cost real money, except they were literally just reskins of Pea Shooter with slightly different abilities. But yeah, this is definitely a really unique Plants vs. Zombies game and well, but it's honestly not really that good from what I've heard. As well, from what I've heard, a lot of the levels are just really repetitive as well, since it's a tower defense game and the zombies just go up and down, it really doesn't get that interesting. And well, for the first few months after this game was released, it actually was pretty successful, but after about a year, the people just started playing this game less and less and that's why PopCap shut it down. But yeah, it's still a pretty interesting piece of Plants vs. Zombies media, and what was one of the first Plants vs. Zombies games that were released. Moving on, we have Plants vs. Zombies Journey to the West, released in the year 2013. Now, unlike Plants vs. Zombies Great Wall Edition, this game actually has a lot of new plants and zombies that aren't just reskins. As well, instead of just retexturing a bunch of different worlds, plants, and zombies, they actually made a few unique ones for this game. But sadly, just like the last two games that we looked at, this game is discontinued, but you can still play it on an archive. And well, some of the plants in this game were actually power-up plants, which you could actually move around the map, such as being the Iron Man, Walnut, and the Wukong Pea. And well, these new and exclusive plants had a ton of health, and well, you could actually move them around the map, and they also had power-ups. As well, every once in a while, the Wukong Pea could actually spawn in a staff that would kill all the zombies in front of it instantly. So yeah, these plants were really overpowered and you use them in basically every single level of the game. And well, as you progressed through the game and went through more worlds, every single world would basically give you a new one of these. 
And well, even though a lot of these look pretty weird, they're still pretty interesting and pretty cool. And when this game also had all the exact same old worlds from the original, it actually added 7 more new worlds. And well, throughout these 7 worlds, they added another 50 levels to the game, so yeah, they basically doubled the amount of content that was in the original Plants vs. Zombies. And well, with that came an underwater stage, it would actually introduce a lot of new plants. And well, almost every single one of these plants are exclusive to this game and haven't been seen since. But yeah, this game is very interesting and has a pretty interesting history behind it that I can go fully over in this video. As well, this game actually has a lot of exclusive content in it and it would actually take a while to go over basically everything. But yeah, this is definitely one of the best exclusive Plants vs. Zombies Chinese Edition games that were ever released. Moving on to the next game, we have Plants vs. Zombies 2 released in the year 2013. Now, I'm going to be going over Plants vs. Zombies 2 Chinese Edition and the International Edition separately. So starting off with the International Edition, this game was released in 2013 with tons of new content. But when this game first released, it only actually had three worlds being Ancient Egypt, Pirate Seas, and the Wild West. And well, throughout the next few months and also few years, you would actually get a lot of new content in this game and they would add tons of new worlds to it. And well, since this game had a lot of new worlds in it, they never actually added too many mini-games. As well, the only really mini-games in this game is either the Vase Breaker game mode and also the Endless Edition that you unlock throughout the worlds. And well, I do think it's pretty cool that every single world has an Endless Edition to it, I think it would have been better if they added a few more game modes. As well, the Plants vs. Zombies 2 Chinese Edition has a lot more content than the original Plants vs. Zombies 2 release internationally. As well, for whatever reason, Plants vs. Zombies 2 Chinese Edition has a ridiculous amount of content. And well, to this day, Plants vs. Zombies 2 Chinese Edition gets new updates basically every single month. So yeah, there's basically new plants being added to the Chinese edition of the game every single month. So yeah, compared to Plants vs. Zombies 2 Chinese edition to the international release, there's actually a lot more content in the Chinese exclusive version. Which I honestly really never understood as well, the international version is actually a lot more popular. So I have no idea why they would release more content in the version of the game that's less popular, but in my opinion it would make a lot more sense to make the version of the game that's a lot more popular have the most content. But yeah, either way, both versions of the game are extremely popular and have tons of new content even though one version has a lot more than the other. The only really bad thing about Plants vs. Zombies 2 is that, well, the levels just seem to be a bit unbalanced. As well, but it seems like the majority of the levels in the game are just really easy. And well, especially with the implementation of premium plants where you literally have to pay money to unlock certain premium plants, like $5 for a single plant. And well, this game is filled with microtransactions. So yeah, besides the constant microtransactions that are in the game and also the gameplay not being as good as the original, it's still overall a pretty good game. And I do have to say, there's a lot more content than the original. Which is definitely a good thing about the game. Moving on we have Plants vs Zombies All Stars released in the year 2014. Now just like all the other exclusive Plants vs Zombies editions in China besides Plants vs Zombies 2 this one was discontinued. But once again just like all the other discontinued games there's an archive of it. And well, I honestly have no idea why this game was discontinued as well it was actually really popular. But yeah, I actually have no idea why Popcat discontinued this game, as well when it was discontinued, it was actually still pretty popular. As well, it was discontinued July 11th of 2020, so yeah, I honestly have no idea why this game was discontinued as well, but it was still relatively popular. But yeah, this game actually has a bit of a unique thing to it, as well as more of an RPG game. Which is something that no other Plants vs. Zombies game has. So yeah, it's definitely a really interesting concept for a Plants vs. Zombies game, and well, I actually think they executed it pretty well. As though there was actually a lot of different levels to the game, and well, there was also different ranks in the levels. As well, just like the Plants vs. Zombies 2 Chinese Edition, there's actually multiple ranks for every single level, like a rank 1, a rank 2, and a rank 3 difficulty. So yeah, this game actually had a lot of content in it, and it would actually be constantly updated for multiple years. And since this game was being constantly updated with more and more new content and more and more new plants, it actually had a relatively good player base. And well, for a long time, every single day there was thousands of active players playing this game. 
But yeah, one thing that also makes this game really cool is well, you could actually rank up your plants. As well, for example, with Cattail, you start out with Cattail as a rank 1 plant, then you rank up to Dogtail, then Foxtail. Another example is that you start off with the small jalapeno, then rank up to the normal jalapeno, and then rank up to the devil chili. So yeah, basically every single level in the game actually ranks up these plants except for a few of them. And well, since they actually had to make a lot of new rank up plants, this game is actually has a lot of exclusive content. As well, you'll find some really strange plants like the triplet sunflower, which is in no other game. And same thing with other plants like the Super Citron, it's just never been released in any other game, which makes it just a lot more unique. But yeah, Plants vs. Zombies All-Stars is definitely a really unique game, and well, I'm kind of sad that they discontinued it. As well, I think it would have been pretty cool if they continued to update this game with new content, but still, there's a lot of content in this game, and you could play the archive version of it. Next up, we have Plants vs. Zombies Garden Warfare. This game was released in the year 2014 and was Plants vs. Zombies' first ever third-person shooter. And while this game was obviously a lot different at the time than any other Plants vs. Zombies game, but it was a huge success. But yeah, with this game, there was tons of maps and tons of unlockable items. And while there was also tons of unlockable characters, and overall, it was just a really good game with tons of content in it. And well, since this game had a lot of unlockable plants, there actually came to be a few really strange plants like Chester the Chomper. As well, this is one of the few promotional plants Plants vs. Zombies ever released in any other games, and well, it was a pretty strange one. And well, this was the first ever Plants vs. Zombies game where you could play with people internationally. As well, with the console edition and the DS edition of Plants vs. Zombies, you could play with your friends, but in this game, you could play internationally with people around the world. Which is definitely one of the big factors for this game's success, as well, you could play in different lobbies and get skill levels and level up in the game. And obviously, as you leveled up, the lobbies got harder, as well, the better you were, the better the players you would go against, so yeah, it was just kind of a really good game. And well, this game was actually so good that they released a sequel only two years later being Plants vs. Zombies Garden Warfare 2. Now, Garden Warfare 2 is definitely a great game and is basically an improvement of the original. And well, a lot of people actually say that Garden Warfare 2 is the best game in the entire franchise and I see why. As well, the gameplay in this game is great and well, they have a ton of unlockable items and well, you could play this game for a really long time. And well, they basically did what they did for the original Plants vs. Zombies Garden Warfare game and just made it a lot better. And well, I have to say, this is probably the last amazing Plants vs. Zombies game that PopCat has released, as well the next three games I'll be looking at definitely aren't as good as this one. And well, this game definitely has to be one of, if not the best Plants vs. Zombies games that were ever released. And well, there's also tons of different game modes in this game, so not only can you play online, you can also play other tons of different game modes to unlock other things and just have fun in general. As well, there was a total of 17 different game modes, so yeah, there was actually a lot to do in this game. But yeah, sadly, the last major update in this game was back in 2020, and well, they only updated it in 2024 to give it an anti-cheat to stop hackers from playing in the public lobbies. But besides that one anti-cheat update, there's basically been no new content in this game since 2020. But even though this game hasn't really been updated in years, it still has an extremely high player base and well, it's still probably one of the most active games in the Plants vs. Zombies franchise. Moving on, we have Plants vs. Zombies Heroes. Now, this game was released in the year 2016, and well, it was actually pretty interesting, as well, instead of just collecting plants inside the game, you could also collect cards and get the plants into the game by scanning them. It's kind of similar to the Pokemon trading card game app, but instead of scanning in Pokemon, you would actually just scan different heroes into the game. So yeah, it's actually a pretty interesting concept to actually scan cards into the game. But yeah, this game was actually really popular for around the first two years after it was released, but after that, the game just kind of died out. And well, one of the main reasons for that is, well, this game just kind of started getting updated inactively. As well, from around 2016 and 2017, this game was getting updated actually really frequently, but when it 2018 hit, they just kind of stopped updating the game for whatever reason. You know, I don't really know why they did that, as well, the game at the time was actually still pretty popular, and well, since 2020, they only updated it twice. So yeah, in the past four years, they've only updated this game twice, and well, it really doesn't seem like they're gonna return to it, as well, the player base is basically non-existent for this game anymore. 
But yeah, for the gameplay of Plants vs. Zombies Heroes, it's kind of similar to Plants vs. Zombies All-Stars RPG style, but they also added a bit more into it than just being an RPG game, and they kind of made it based off of Plants vs. Zombies, so it's not fully an RPG game. As well, there's some actual levels in the game where you just shoot at the zombies instead of playing with an RPG. But yeah, it's a pretty interesting concept for a game, and it's kind of sad that they only stopped updating it a year after it was released. Next up, we have Plants vs. Zombies Battle for Neighborville, released in 2019. Now, this is the most recent third-person shooter released into the Plants vs. Zombies franchise, and well, this game was actually perceived pretty well when it was first released. But after the original hype of the game getting released, it just kind of died down as a lot of people just call it a copy of Garden Warfare 2 and Garden Warfare. As well, but it had a lot of similar features and it obviously just seems to be like a slightly added on version of Garden Warfare 2. But yeah, with that said, this still actually is a pretty good game as well. They updated it a lot and added tons of new features including maps and different characters. You know, this game actually has a lot of different game modes, even more than the original Garden Warfare 2, as well, they made a lot of new game modes within the updates. So yeah, even though this game wasn't really perceived the best, it still did pretty well. But yeah, this is still definitely just a really good game, but it's not as good as the others, which is why it's kind of perceived as not being that good of a game, as well, people think that Garden Warfare 2 and Garden Warfare are just a lot better, because well, they are, but it still doesn't mean this game is bad, as well, but still a pretty good game. Moving on, we have Plants vs. Zombies 3 being the most recent game in the main series. Now, this game has a pretty interesting history as well, it was released multiple times, but then taken off and then just re-released. As well, this game was originally confirmed to have a soft launch back in October of 2020, but it wasn't actually released until September 7th of 2021. And well, the soft launch was only released in Australia and the Philippines. And well, shortly after it was taken off and the other soft launch was released in 2022. And this time instead of just releasing it in Australia and the Philippines, it was also released in the Netherlands. And well, then in October of 2022, it was available in a few limited regions. And well, finally in 2024, the majority of the countries in the world could finally play a soft launch of this game. But still, the full release of the game hasn't been confirmed when it will actually be released, so who knows how long we'll actually have to wait for the full game to be released. As well, the soft launch was originally announced in 2020, well, finally in 2024, we have really an international release of the game. But yeah, this game has definitely had a lot of development issues, as well, it's taken 4 years just to get the soft launch released internationally. And well, honestly, this game just doesn't really seem to be that good, and it has actually got a lot of negative reception. Which is one of the main reasons why PopCap keeps taking it on and off the App Store, as well, they keep updating things to make the players more happy, but then they complain about more things. So yeah, at the moment, it kind of seems that Plants vs. Zombies 3 is just kind of a lost cause. As well, there's just so many issues with the game at this point that they might as well just start updating the game and stop releasing soft launches over and over again. And they instead should just start working on the main game and stop releasing soft launches over and over again. And they should probably just focus on the issues that people are complaining about, then add more and more content and keep making it better. But it seems that EA most likely won't do that as well, they haven't really changed a lot since the original soft launch, just making the graphics a lot better and changing a few things that a lot of people complained about. But yeah, for now, it seems that Plants vs. Zombies 3 will never have a full release anytime soon. But yeah, if you enjoyed this video, then please like and subscribe and comment down below which Plants vs. Zombies game is your favorite, and yeah, have a great day.